Hi, good morning, everyone. Welcome to the webcast. Um, it's that time of year, end of the year. I know everyone's super busy uh, planning for the holidays, planning essentially. I know the last two weeks of the month, there um, a lot of people hopefully get to take some vacation time. But before you do, we have to talk about the end of the year and how to process the open enrollment file. So we have about 50 slides today to talk about an email with a reminder about the webcast sent out this morning. Um, the guide was attached to that. Also a link to the PowerPoint slide. So I see a number of you've already accessed. Um, so without further ado, let's hop in and talk a little bit about the webcast today. Um, for those of you new to attending a Team Live's a Team Live event, um, just some housekeeping items. If you have any questions during the webcast, there is a little chat bot up at the top question mark. That is where you can ask your question during the event. Both myself and Kim York, who is here um, working with me, have access to that, can respond to your questions, or there may be something that I can talk about during the webcast. So anytime you have questions, um, pop them in there. Um, but if it's after the webcast, we do have a team box. It's meetus at education.ky.gov. Any questions after that should be directed to the team box so both Kim and I can address it. Also, this webcast will be archived, so there's no need to wait. The attendee link will actually continue to work um, for the short time, but for um, the long term, the webcast will be saved on the KDE media portal. So um, this old slide here, because I always like to introduce myself, but I know we have a lot of new people out there, so I want to tell you who we are and what we do. Um, my name is Kristen Lambert. I'm on the KDE. We call ourselves the KDE Munis team. We're within the Office of Education Technology and the Division of School Technology Services. There's a total of three of us on the team, uh, myself and Kim York, and we work with our vendor partner, Kathy Pelletier. Um, we handle questions on state reporting, and if you had any, this is a, a webcast on state reporting our Kentucky Employee Benefits Program. So if you had any questions, you'll want to send them to our team box. So we're here today to talk about 2023. I can't believe I'm saying 2023 yet on the open enrollment file processing. We're anticipating the file to be delivered on Friday, December 9th. It should be processed tomorrow. Um, of course, notification will be sent once it's available. The end of year payroll guide was attached. You'll want to follow all those steps in the guide. They're listed for a reason, um, but I know a lot of people get nervous. This is, it's a big file, but there's not a lot different in the way you import it and process it from a normal, normal daily file, other than it includes all your employees at this point. Uh, let's see here, the next slide. This is new for this year, it is verifying your 2023 codes were loaded. Um, so back in November, we worked with Tyler and they distributed all the codes to districts in your own production environment. While we work with Tyler to make sure it loads correctly, I can't physically check um, you know, 171 environments. So um, you'll want to check that to verify those codes were loaded before you proceed with the open enrollment file. Um, to do that, we go to human capital management, human resources, personnel setup, and the payroll miscellaneous codes. There's a long list. Um, you'll want to go down to the INSL codes and select that for the insurance levels and select accept. At this point, you should see a confirm record set um, message. Most districts will show 238 records. Um, of course, your district may have in past have deleted some codes, so um, your list will be different. But if you see 238 records, great. That means the loads of the codes have been loaded into your environment. You can also continue by double checking, browsing that list. The list of codes is here on um, the slide. It's also included in the guide. And the codes for this year start with like AB01 for the Living Well Plan. So verify those codes are loaded, and you can go ahead and do that today. The next part of open enrollment processing is verifying any records that are sending and pending. So I would hope about this point of the year, anything for calendar year 2020 has been processed. Um, review any records that are sitting in the pending area. Determine if you still need those. Do they need to be processed? 
they need to be processed, go ahead and take care of that. If you have any old unprocessed records that are just sitting and pending, you haven't dealt with them, we're getting ready to start with the new year and you still like, please go ahead and delete those records. They're not needed anymore. No reason to leave them hanging out there. Um, let's see here. Okay. As I mentioned, there's a purge button in Unis. So you can delete those records out. They're no longer needed. The exception to that is if you have new employees whose insurance is effective as January 1st, 2023 or later. So if you have any benefit records for those new employees that are sitting in the pending area with that effective date of 1-1-2023, we always say just as added caution, keep those in there until after you receive the open enrollment file in case the um, new employee was not included on the open enrollment file. We anticipate the employee should be, but there are times where they may not. Um, so if the new employee is included on the open enrollment file, at that point, you can purge that old record sitting and pending. Um, but if you do not receive that new employee on that open enrollment file, then there you have a record there to process. The next step is to, as I mentioned, purge the old records and pending. So in the pending area, um, you select import pending from the main screen. Um, if you have records sitting in pending, you can select the import later button to view any pending records. Um, from there, you select the update button, select all to select all those files, um, individual records. Or you can deselect any records that you want to leave there. And at that point, you can select purge to leave everything sitting in pending. Um, next step is this point, you're able to import the 22, uh, I'm sorry, Import that's I already see a typo on here. Import the 2023 open enrollment file. So we've already done 2022. So I mentioned we anticipate the open enrollment file on December 9th. Notification will be sent. Um, those files can be imported. They can be sitting in pending until you're ready to um, work on them once all the December 2022 um, payrolls have been completed. So. At that point, also I want to note if you have any old import files that are sitting there that you have not processed from prior years or prior months, you'll want to um, import those. You can select it's invalid or import and delete those records, but there's no reason for any of those old um, enroll um, daily files to be sitting there. At this point, again, we're starting with a new slate, new year. So open, um, select that open enrollment file you notice. It's open enrollment file based on the date. And also, it's that size. The file size will be significantly larger than your daily files. And this should be no different from how you import your files on a daily basis when you receive them. Um, start following the this, this steps. You'll select Accept on the Export Filter screen to view the report. Um, that point, you'll download the report um, and you can view it, proceed to the proof stage. Also note the open enrollment file and all daily files should be imported in the order by the date they were received. You do not want to import files received after the open enrollment file until the open enrollment file has been imported. You can review the open enrollment records and pending, of course. However, you do not want to process the set start date, the move to active, or the update deduction steps until after completing all the December 2022 payrolls. Uh, let me go back. I want to touch on this again about the way the files are received. Um, DEI runs a process every night. If there's a change, it'll spit out on a file. That's why you do need to import these in um, a different order. We've helped people over the years that wait to do the open enrollment file until later and they receive um, files since and things can get out of sequence. You want to make sure you process them in the order received so you have the most up to date record. Um, in the US. So the effective date on records sometimes are um, cost concern. Your health insurance, FSA, Vision, Dental, they all have a January 2023 effective date, but your life plans, those tend to have a date that are when um, the employee originally enrolled in the program. So they'll be effective as of 1, 2023 or earlier. So it can vary by employee. Step four, 
complete all your 2022 play rolls. So once those are all completed, you can process the deduction steps after. I always like to say, let's start with a clean slate. So step five, you'll find and delete last year's deductions in the employee deductions program. You want to make sure this is done and completed after all your 2022 payrolls have been completed. And you'll want to do this for all the state sponsored health plans for employee health insurance, the employer health insurance deduction, FSA dependent, FSA health, optional life, dependent life, dental and vision. <clears throat> Excuse me, those um, will all be included in the open um, enrollment file for every employee. So the way to find and delete all last year deductions is by choosing the global option in the employee deductions program. You'll select global and then click delete, which is the red X on the um, ribbon. Excuse me a moment, we need a drink. At this point, you can select delete from the drop down menu um, and accept. You choose your deduction code and it will delete all the deductions. It's very simple. It works super easy and pretty quickly. So delete all those state sponsored deductions before we start importing and posting um, updating the deductions for the employees. Next step at this point is you set your deduction start date and move the records to active. So after everything has been completed, um, you can Begin to turn uh, moving um, your records over the active set. You need to select the start date to move to active. Your start date needs to be um, a deduction start date that is before or within the payroll period. We tend to always use an example of like 1214. Uh, for this example, its payroll is 1215 2022 start date, end date is 1231 2022. Check date is um, January 7th, 2023. Um, I would use 1214. I could use 1215. It really doesn't matter. Be as long as it is before or within that payroll period. Um, this reasoning is used throughout the year. So if you're processing records in April and the payroll start date was April 15th, you would want the deduction start date to be at least um, April 14th, April 15th, it needs to fall within that payroll period. Don't use January throughout the year or December. We're using that just for this one um, import file. That date would vary on every import file you import. You want to grab it for the next um, payroll. So when that deduction is supposed to be valid and um, active. So after you select that deduction start date, you got, um, move those records to active. Uh, you have all these records sitting in your pending area. If you only have the open enrollment records sitting in the pending area, you can go ahead and skip to the next step. If you have imported the open enrollment file and you've imported other files that came after the open enrollment file, there is a shortcut so you're only working on the open enrollment file. You can select search, type in the import file name, um, mark all the types of records down below the health, basic life, all the, dip, the dental vision and select accept. And at that point, it's, it's a filter. It'll filter so you only see the open enrollment file. This process is really no different again than your um, daily process with your open enrollment files and the pending area you select update you can select all to select all the open enrollment records and select accept. At this point, um, we're setting the deduction start date and moving the records to active. So you select update, um, select all and accept. You're going to select the um, start date. And that enter the deduction start date that you will assign. Um, like I was saying, we're going to use maybe 12:14 in this example, and then you move to active. Throughout the year, you need to make sure that your records are moved. Um, don't leave them sitting and pending. There's a reason that open enrollment. We also have this Kentucky Employee Benefit Program. These records are used and are vital to federal reimbursement processing. So when you receive these files from uh, 
from DPI, they should be imported and moved to the active set. Um, if they are not imported and moved to active, federal reimbursement will be incorrect because it uses those health amounts to calculate federal reimbursement. Just a little note, step seven, I had my first question ever on a post-health tax deduction um, last month. So they do exist. I think it's kind of a unicorn. My understanding is you would be aware if you had a post-tax deduction. If that was the case, please refer to the Kentucky Employee Benefits Processing Guide. As I mentioned, this is a rare circumstance. Um, you would have to go in and toggle the pre-tax field on the Kentucky Employee Benefit Record so the program knows that it is a post-tax deduction. So now all your records are sitting in the active set. You're ready to update deductions at this point. Um, if you don't process this um, step until all prior steps have been completed um, from the Kentucky Employee Benefits main menu, menu you select your benefit records, select current find. And current find is going to query and return all records that are the most, have the most current effective date and the highest sequence number. So when you select current find, you may see records for employees that are no longer there. That's anticipated because they are still part of the record set if they have not been purged. Um, it's going to be their most current record and um, the highest sequence. There is a field on the Kentucky Employee Benefits screen where it says, uh, posted, so those will not post. Also, we're using that effective date, but you set start date on the deduction. There's a reason for that, so those old records don't um, process. So from, we're just repeating here, from the um, benefits screen, you select current find, that'll find your most current records, select the update deduction button at this point. This is where you enter your minimum deduction start date. We're using 1214 in this example. Um, this and only benefit records with a deduction start date as of that date or later will be processed during the update deduction process. Um, any unposted records with a deduction start date that falls before that date will be ignored. And this method is, should be used throughout the year, not just for the open enrollment file. So my earlier example where we talked about maybe you're importing records in April, you'd want to use an April or March start date on a deduction. Um, so you can filter out any old unprocessed records during this um, step. Um, some examples of why that reasoning is in there. Say you have a retired teacher that is now a sub and has an unposted health insurance record from a prior year. If the minimum deduction start date is not used, the unposted record could create a health insurance deduction. Um, and that sub would start having deductions taking out. You don't want that. As long as you're using that minimum deduction start date, um, it will work. Another example is an employee has multiple benefit records for the same plan year. Um, minimum deduction start date is not entered in an older unposted record made post. So the uh, minimum deduction start date filters those older unposted records based on the deduction start date that you entered on those records. So at this point, you have the um, screen up. We talked about this stuff. You're in, entering your minimum deduction start date. Always default to delete employee deduction. There's even though you deleted all those deductions already, um, you'll select that. Uh, select all your type of records and put and um, output post. Select yes to post the um, deductions. At this point, if should you have any errors or problems come up, we've seen these periodically throughout the years on, um, on certain instances, not everyone, just some one district maybe has an issue here or there. It would happen at this step. If that does happen to you, please take a screenshot of that error messages. There may be several error messages. Please take a screenshot of each of those. Kim and I can work through fixing any issues that you have and um, and help you out from that point forward. Knock on wood, hope 
Hopefully we don't see any of those errors going forward. Some things have been fixed in the program in the past year, um, but they still pop up now and then. So if we have any problems, please take a screenshot because um, we can decipher the error from those error messages. The update deduction process must be performed in UNIS. The reasoning for this is it posts both the employee and employer portion, which is critical for W-2 processing. Um, you know, you're, you as a district are responsible for making sure both the employee and employer um, deduction post because that cost is included on the W-2. Just miscellaneous import file info, you continue importing your files received after the open enrollment file. Do this throughout the year. Any files received after the open enrollment file may contain both 2022 and 2023 records. So if you receive any 2022 records after importing the 2023 open enrollment file, um, it will require you to manually update the employee deductions and payroll to correct the amount owed. If you actually post that, it would overwrite the 2023 deduction amounts. So be careful about moving those records to active um, since you have the 2023 records already in the Kentucky Employee Benefit Program and look at those pot to um, make any changes manually within payroll. The FSA amounts that we receive on the files from DEI reflect the total annual amounts to withhold no problem at the first of the year because we're basing it on a full year. But after the open enrollment file is imported and you receive anything for FSA records, you do need to update the cycles on the record before moving the FSA record to, cap, um, to active. Venus will recalculate the per check amount. The reason is we have no idea how many payrolls you have left for the year. Uh, or maybe this is a new employee. But either way, you can calculate how many um, cycles are left per year and you just change, fix it for you. So you're only taking um, the annual amount from the employee each year and not more or not less that they requested. OK, so that part is pretty much on the open enrollment processing. Nothing really has changed there. I'm going to take a pause. I see. If we can. Are there any questions on Q&A? Kristen, yes, there's one. Um, we have a question. I guess I don't understand why we'd use a deduction start date of 12 15 22 when the rates are active as of 1 1 23. The deduction start date is totally up to you as long as it falls a day before or within this the payroll period. And those payroll periods vary across the state. So that's I was just using that example as my payroll started on 12-15 and ended on 12-31 with the January check date. That's, it's totally arbitrary per district. So hopefully that answers that question. And always people are question that. I can't tell you what start date to put on there because I don't know what, unless you reach out to me and tell me what your payroll period is. But the same reasoning is used throughout the year. It just needs to be um, before or within the payroll period for which that deduction should be taken. So if your payroll start date starts in January, then you could use a January um, deduction start date. So hopefully that answers questions for y'all. I know that's always been a great area and confusing for folks. That's just purely example. So wait and see if there's any more questions on this. We're going to hop into some miscellaneous here in payroll information at this point. Um, don't forget to update your Social Security after the um, after the final payroll of the year is done. So go to your uh, Social Security deduction, the deduction of benefit master, and you'll want to update the employee and the employer limit field for all FICA tax deductions before generating the first payroll for 2023. Um, let's see here. So for tax tables, the state and the federal annual tax tables will be distributed when available pending review um, of the new tax tables. Of course, we'll send out notice once it's loaded. The tax tables from 2022 will continue to work until new tax tables are loaded. 
you have the option to enter the tax tables yourself as well. There, nothing preventing you from doing that. The it does take um, multiple people to get that loaded, so I can't guarantee at what point in January it will be available to you. Um, but once IRS has, has released the final publication, we will work on it and work with the Tyler people to load in your um, district environment. That being said, uh, the Kentucky tax tables are official and have been released. The federal tax tables have not been released. So if you wanted to load your Kentucky tax table for next year, you can do that, a tax table program. Good news, and I guess bad news, Kentucky tax has actually decreased a half percent, but I know Department of Revenue is going to start taxing different services. So, um, so there are changes with the Kentucky tax table. You can replicate last year's tax table by selecting the copy button. Um, the select calc button on the ribbon. You need to upgrade, update the gross wage minimum field to the new standard deduction rate. And also select the tax um, table button on the ribbon and update and change that amount to be withheld to 4.5%. So that's Kentucky tax. I also want to talk, since we're talking about taxes, let's talk about the payroll control settings. So there's a payroll control settings called, called use frequency when annualizing. Why does this matter? Um, pretty much because of late hires. Late hires may only have two or three payrolls um, on their job salary record before the end of the fiscal year, and um, they'll have no taxes taken out because minus thinks they're not making very much money, even though they're continue to be a full-time employee the year for the entire calendar year. So federal tax um, calculates a couple different ways. So it could either look at the number of pays or pay frequency in employee job salary. If the control setting is set to no, the MUNIS will use the employee's numbers of pay for an employee job salary to calculate federal income tax. Example, I just said like they only have three um, pays left uh, for the year when they're a new employee. Um, if the control setting is set to yes, then it'll use a full number of pays associated with pay frequency. Um, the number of pays, whether it pulls from pay frequency or number of pays and enjoy an employee job salary, is used to annualize employees' gross, the deduction gross for federal income tax, times the number of pays or pay frequency instead of the actual number of periods from employee job salary. So something to consider. Um, you want to take a look at that. More information here on the pay on the next slide. If you want to make any changes, you may want to try this in your test or training environment, generate a payroll and see if there's any differences. Of course, if you have any questions, please direct those to MUNIS support. I just wanted to make you all aware the setting was in MUNIS since we're talking about taxes. So 2022 year in code delivery for SAS clients, uh, um, they're actually being installed for you. So each year, Tyler has end of year um, updates available for W-2 processing, 1099s, ACA, anything like that. They're making sure that it's installed for all SAS clients, including Tyler Forms code, if you're Tyler Form code customer. So that will take place this weekend. Um, any additional updates will be applied through January 4th or 6th in the next um, um, service window. So nothing to worry about as far as getting your year end updates applied. Tyler SAS services will be making sure those are applied for y'all. 1095C reporting information. Um, last year, the IRS proposed extending the timelines permanently. So the forms are due to employees March 2nd now, um, 2023, so we have time to work on those. Paper filing to the IRS is due the 28th of February. Electronic is March 31st. Um, the reason I bring this up is because we work with the Department of Employee Insurance to distribute files to you all. The file coverage dates for participants, which are the employees and dependents, will be distributed around January 10th. That takes myself, somebody else at KDE, people at Tyler, people Department of Employee Insurance. So it has to go through a number of um, 
steps before it gets to you all. An email will be sent once it's distributed. If you haven't seen the email, we're still working on it. Hopefully it'll be around January 10th, maybe the 11th. There are guides on the KDE website on processing um, the ACA files since there is a Kentucky specific component with those um, with that processing. Um, Nevis guides provided by Tyler can be found on Tyler Community. We also store those guides on our KDE Nevis Enterprise ERP SharePoint site. That is a mouthful, but that is the web address up on the screen. Um, you will have to enter your district email and password to access the site. There is a um, link on the left. This is documents. You can go there. There will be a folder. This is 2022 in the year documents. I saw Tyler Community posted a po bunch of stuff um, yesterday, the day before. So once I have a chance, I will actually drop the Tyler documents in our SharePoint site um, for people to look at there if they want. Um, we can't publish those on the KDE uh, public website because they are Tyler documents, but we can put them on our SharePoint site. Any questions, again, please send them to the team. We'll be happy to help, talk to you on the phone, however we can help you out. Um, the process for year end is, there's so, a lot of extra steps, but it's really no different than processing your daily file. We just want to remind you, make sure that December payrolls are completed, delete all those old um, unused records that may be sitting and pending, um, delete the employee deductions from the employee deductions program so you can start with a clean slate and then process your file. Um, I feel like I went through that a lot quicker than I intended, so I don't see any other questions on here. We'll hang on for a moment and see if anybody has any other questions. Other than that, I hope everybody has happy holidays and um, we'll send out notifications once everything is available to talk.